What's up, YouTube? I guess that's what the kids say nowadays. Anyways, this shit's crazy, right? This corona stuff going on. So I wanna talk about recession-proofing your business, your life, and I'm trying to do it at AppSumo and Sumo Group and all the things we have. And so I wanted to share just everything we're thinking about and then action items of things we can go do because there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, but what things are certain, and this is something me and Chad Boyda, my business partner at Sumo, uh, have talked about, is that society is, has changed forever. Um, you know, your grandparents are like, you remember, oh, 50 years ago I had the recession. And you're like, shut up, grandpa, I don't give a shit. That's going to be what we're going to be talking about in 50 years. Um, Alamo Drafthouse, movie theater in Austin, closed down completely, who knows for how long. Uh, I just went to REI, and at REI, they wouldn't even let me in the store. They, they said that now we can't return the package, and it's, of course, I'm returning something, but it's two weeks later, and uh, maybe the store will be open in two weeks. No restaurants or bars are open, no more crowds of 10 people. Uh, in Austin, Texas, and this is happening around the globe. Um, tons of layoffs, and this is not fear, this is just the what's happening with it. And I think businesses are and they're gonna be struggling, including our own, and hopefully we can get through it and hopefully you can get through it together. Um, food shortages, long lines at the grocery store, you've seen it, I'm out of, you know, tacos, no, I'm just kidding, but I'm saying like, it's weird with all this food stuff um, that's happening. And I think people that are in the hospitality, you realize how much you appreciate these people and a lot of other people uh, that are working because it's like, whoa, we, they're going to have trouble paying rent in the upcoming months. And so many businesses, including I know for my individual self, are going to be pulling back on spending or won't have the money to be spending and holding off to say, I need to wait for things to be stabilizing because of all this uncertain, uh, uncertainty. And so things won't be the same. Business won't be as usual. Uh, and this is going to change my life, your life, when they watch us in 10 years, if YouTube's even still around forever. And so in our lifetime, we've experienced maybe four major life-changing events just in, in about 20 or 30 years for most of us, which is the birth of the internet. That's changed our lives completely. 9-11. But I would say even with 9-11, as much as it did change completely and it's tragic, has it really like impacted you how you live today? Probably not. The 2008 economic crisis, I think for a lot of our generation, 20, 30 year olds, didn't have houses, didn't have a lot in the market, didn't have Robin Hood where we could buy cheap ass stocks for, for cheap. Um, so I don't know if we really even really felt that. And so the coronavirus and how this has impacted us, I think will dramatically change uh, how we're gonna be behaving and thinking and doing today, tomorrow, and probably the rest of our lifetimes. So, so think about that, right? The way society how, inter, how, blah, blah, blah. So think about that, the way society operates, how people are interacting, business not as usual. This will never be the same. And there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of scariness. But, but think about this, I think right now, I know for me, my, uh, my fiance was asking me, what are we doing this week? And I'm like, yo, I'm worried about today. I ain't worried about this week. And there's a lot of variety of how people are feeling. There's, uh, my stepdad was saying that he was at 7-Eleven and this guy was like, well, I'm old and I'm a smoker and I don't really care because I'm not gonna get it. And then I've had someone who's a, a handyman who helps work on our house, his, his father-in-law, they're gonna come help work on something and they're like, no, he doesn't wanna leave the house right now. And I said, good, you guys shouldn't. I think that's a smart decision. So how is this going to look in six months? How is this going to look in six years? How is this going to look in six years? Like, think about this, right? Do you think in six months you're going to feel comfortable again not having some extra food in your house? So in six months, do you think that you'll feel comfortable going to a gym or a soul cycle class where there's a lot of people, you'll be touching a bunch of stuff, a lot of other people have touched it? Do you think in six months that there is a possibility you might be a little scared of being around someone who had coronavirus? Those are just some of the things about, like, that are scary that like I think are the reality of the future and business won't be as usual. So some of these new realities of how the world is already shifting and it's amazing. I feel very almost fortunate that we get to experience how crazy this is in our lifetime. It's unfortunate, but it, uh, it's unique to experience is that there's these new realities. And so here's some of the new realities. I'm sure you've observed some of them uh, and I'm sure there's, there's more to come the home. So this is, this is our guest room. We have a small little house here in Austin. But think about how much you're at home now. You're eating, you're cooking, you're entertaining. You might not even have people over, but how much more your home is going to be shifting, right? Your online shopping. Online shopping, I think of overall retail sales is still like around 13%. So it's it's a fraction of it. But think about this. So much of the shopping and the Instacarting and Amazoning and whatever the service you're doing is online. Walmart, all this stuff. Online is going to get even crazy bigger. Commercial space. So if you have an office, we have a $40,000 office. It's a lot of money in my mind. Why? There's no one even at the office. Zero. Empty. There's. I think there's literally a guy out the, the front door, security guard. That's it. And so it's like, why are we spending 40000 a month and maybe we'll be doing twenty or 10000 And maybe companies that are, won't need that much space at all. And so that will be retracted. For exercising, right? The gyms are all closed. So I have a bike trainer. 
It's my bike trainer. Maybe I'm gonna just do push-ups. I've got some bands. I've got, actually got an Oculus, so I'll do some boxing with that. But that's gonna be changed forever. Dating, right? You won't, maybe you don't wanna be touching these random randoms anymore. Get off Tinder, stop touching all the randoms. Uh, but I definitely think if it's like, hey, come over to my house because we can't go out in public, that's gonna be changed. Manufacturing. So think about manufacturing. It's what's blown my mind about this overall experience is the interconnectedness of the entire world from a hospitality worker who's locally here to a manufacturing person in China to the people in Israel to the th different things that like how everything is almost dependent on each other. And I think in manufacturing, one of the things that, that I'm observing is that we're dependent on other countries. And I wonder if we'll have to reduce that dependency uh, and reduce our specialization. So it's like, oh, if we need stuff, medicine, supplies, and we're waiting on that country and they're kind of in control of our fate. So that's going to be shifting forever. So a, a lot of the people, I know the people at our team at Sumo, uh, hopefully some of the people out there have thought about a lot of these things, but the question I, I like to think, I was like, what can I control? What can I do about it now? So first off, drinking. No. So I, that's definitely for later in the day after you've done all the things you can do. But there are opportunities in business, in creating new businesses or in running your business or adapting your businesses. One of the things I saw uh, in Talk, not TikTok, but Talk, it's run by Nick Kakanis. I just know I saw that wrong, but they do uh, food reservations. So if you want to go to a restaurant, you can do a reservation. Now they've changed it so you can do food meal buying. So they're, they're adjusting. So you've got to adapt. And I love how they've done that so quickly. Um, and there's a lot of different uh, ways to do this. So in terms of what he did with his business, there's delivery services. So if you're at home right now, either go figure out what you can go deliver or go join one of the companies that are doing deliver. How can you enable it? Um, helping restaurants get online. So I just talked about talk. Um, many are struggling. These restaurants are closed doors. Uh, Bolden Creek Cafe always crowded and I, I drove home and I was like it's, there's no one there and I was shocked I was like no there's it's broken something's wrong like my, my mind couldn't compute it so all these restaurants how do you help them deliver how do you help them sell online maybe how do you help them take their popular stuff and sell it even outside of where we are locally uh, there's opportunities for that there's you can go on Shopify you can create your own services or just help them get online uh, VR based games and experiences I think there's way more of these are going to come out now because one people are home and they can code and develop especially the programmers they're amazing but people also need entertainment they need socializing they need connectivity in a safe space so uh, that's just a, it seems to me like the VR world is going to definitely be exploding because of that number four connecting people so either in the VR world uh, or online or on your mobile how are you able to actually connect people and so this is board games. Is it office meetings? I just started a thing called Remo, uh, where we have like a little virtual office. Is it meeting new people, social networking, but it's actually like, oh, how do I really meet new people? Uh, number five, home exercises. So uh, new exercise routines. Uh, there's mirror.co, there's Peloton, which you can use the free app, Eamon's been saying, and just do the exercises. There's uh, Athlean X on Instagram. There's Jeff Nipper on uh, YouTube. Uh, is there new equipment? And so I think there's a lot of opportunity because people are home, like I'm about to jump on my bike. What else can we do to provide and help people that want to be active at home? Number six in relation to health as well is telehealth. Someone like my brother's a doctor. Uh, now there's a need for if people don't want to be driving or if people comfortable, uncomfortable in the hospitals. Fiance works in the hospital. I'm scared of that shit. I am scared uh, that she goes there. But I'm glad that she goes and helps. But it's definitely scary. So more telehealth. So how do you help these doctors actually just get online, find these clients, do your Google SEO mastery and use your powers uh, for good. And number seven, virtual office space. So I talked about Remo, but I think there will be a shift as commercial spaces goes down, more people will need to be connected. There's a ton of tools out there. Uh, and so it's either through tools, maybe it's through knowledge, knowledge is power, uh, and all this other stuff. And so a lot of people, if it's like, yo, man, I'm not trying to start a business. I don't really care about business as usual. I, you know, I just want to be a teammate. So we call people at our company or employee. There's actually more than you can do. Uh, because right now, a lot of these business owners, are closing shop and they're doing their best to be able to support and pay for everyone. Uh, but eventually it's like, yo, well, who's critical or what's critical to be able to keep my business solvent uh, in this challenging time. So there's actually a lot of things that you can be doing. I got five things for you uh, to the workers of the world. And number one, that's ROI profitable. So what exactly is ROI profitable is that if you have, if you have a salary, let's say it's 50,000, are you making at least $51,000 in profit for the company? Right. And so you're like, well, no, I can't do that. I can't do it. Yes, you can in every one of the aspects. And if you can't do that, how do you get to that? So if you're in customer support, how do you help sell more? If you're in customer support, how do you help like save more customers? If you're in customer support, how do you come up with new ideas? If you're in sales, it's, you're like, well, it's obvious. Same thing. If you're a developer, you need to be creating the most important features that actually help grow your business or maybe build new, totally new business lines that help keep the businesses, the business that you're in around. So really think about how am I ROI profitable in this company? And don't necessarily wait for your boss to come tell you how to do it. 
Just start doing it or figuring out or proposing it to them. Uh, number two is waste reduction. So um, what software can you cancel? Any services you can reduce? Usage that you can reduce? Is there any software that's unnecessary? Uh, and so be that person in the company. It doesn't mean just to go cut everything, just go figure out what's critical in the business and maybe even what can you increase. Uh, but in times of uncertainty, people want to have, I think people want to be able to, at least me, I want to be able to sustain as long as possible. So I'm like, well, what's critical? And that's what we're going to be focusing on. Because what happens in businesses or what I'm observing is lagging indicators. So by the time your revenue is starting to decline, like that's already going to be a little bit too late. So you need to be ahead of these things. And, and we may even be too late, but we're doing our best to say, well, if these things are coming, here's the things that we're going to go and circuit breaker them. I guess that's what the word everyone's using nowadays. Um, so be ahead of the waste reduction and be ahead of the planning. Uh, number three is growth opportunities. You always hear it, you know, the Warren Buffett quote, be greedy when people are evil. But when it's scary as shit, it is really hard to be fucking greedy. So think about that. You know, when 2008 was happening, he invested in the banks or right now, no one knows what he's doing. But right now to go and invest and buy things is a really kind of, it's, a, it's hard almost. And, and I've noticed myself going through a lot of emotions of that. But this is where you can be more creative. Maybe there's a new business you've been thinking about. Maybe there's new marketing activities that you don't have to spend money on and you could pull your advertising because I'm talking to a lot of people and a lot of people are pulling their ads back. Um, but what other marketing can you actually do now that would be creative, especially while people are at home, right? You know that more, there's going to be more internet usage because more people are at home, bored, either going to be watching YouTube or they're going to want to be productive. People like feeling good about themselves. Uh, so what are creative things that you can be doing? Number four, discipline. And so instead of canceling your ad spending, right, which is what I've, I've talked about a little bit, how can you be more disciplined in all the actions of your business? How do you make sure that the actions that you're doing are profitable? Right. So if you're doing advertising, make sure your ad re return is like within 30 days. So if you spend a dollar, you want that dollar back, come back within 30 days and you want the return to be at least two dollars. So if that's what, what happens, though, is times are good. You're like, ah, you know, we're trying things out Yeah, it's OK to let it have a little bit of a buffer of a spend. Uh, but really, I think there's follow through with what you say you're going to do and have a little bit more structure and discipline uh, within your business is critical, especially be that person in the company. And number five is attention. So people are afraid. Right. And people want answers. I'm in these two text groups and every day it's like the world is falling. Things are great. Corona this, my government official that it's 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 insane. But within your world, whatever you can do, whatever you can share, whatever you can help, it could be with money, it could be with your skills, it could be with just comfort. Uh, go be the answer for people. And so I'm doing my best with marketing. I'm trying to share stuff on YouTube uh, with this video of some of the things that we're thinking about. If you like it, I can do more of them. Um, I don't know everything, man. And all I know is that I'm, I'm trying to do my best to help the people around me, help myself. Uh, and help you uh, thrive and get some certainty uh, in this it's weird times, man. And so this miss, this list may be a lot longer. Uh, this this whole thing may last a lot longer than any of us can imagine. We're kind of like used to, okay, you know, it happened. We read in the news and you're like, oh, there's SARS or something. I guess it happened over there. Who cares? Uh, but over the six, next six months, uh, Mitchell and our team said to me, he's like, I don't want to look back and regret that I just sat around waiting for something to happen. He's like, I want to look back in six months and said, I did my best to make all the things happen uh, that I could uh, in this kind of wild times. So how do you want to look back on this time uh, while you're out there? Good luck. I'm rooting for you. I'm doing my best too. love you.